Welcome back to episode 7 in the Youthful Revolution series featuring Immortal DC. Season 2 is on the way and we need to take a look at the top 3 important matches I've played since the last episode, followed by the schedule. We got a bit of a slight skin change here, similar but different and there are a reason for it. Obviously there is gonna be a reason and it got nothing to do with the design of the other one as much it has to do with the box that was there. This one is a little bit less boggy. With that little detail out of the way, we can take a look at the third most important match, at least how I categorize it, and it is a win against Oriental away from home. The goal came very late in the in the match, actually. Uh, Mati Res here, our new winger, into Pixioto, who got the goal. So yeah, a very late goal here. It was a very even game. And honestly, I think with the importance in here, Oriental was number seven in the league and or is number seven in the league. And I think they were actually fifth when we played them. So very important match to win, of course. But I don't really think we were the better team out there. It was very even, but I think they were slightly better and we got lucky with that goal. Second most important game to me, or at least how I see it, is against Lusitania. They are fourth in the league and yeah, we lost this one at home. 13 minutes in, they did score the first one and um, yeah, it's a bit of a silly goal because we did get deflected in. Thankfully, we did get back into it here after 32 minutes where Pinner is gonna score a decent goal with his header. But only a couple of minutes later, they do get the winner from a set piece. Ah, oh, it's annoying. I don't I don't think we played bad here. Uh, it, it was an even game and we were probably even the better team out there, but in the end, that set piece, and I knew they were pretty good at set pieces, and also that first goal they got, they really pushed us back early stages uh, in the game and um, later on in the game we were a little bit better as we can tell down here. We were definitely better in the second half. But yeah, it's, it is it is what it is. Sometimes you just don't win them. As you can tell here, the XG is fairly even. So I, I, I would have betted on a draw here, but hey, they got the win and um, it's definitely an important game against one of the better teams. But the most important match in this period of time I played in is against Vit Setubal, who is actually number two in the league. So this is a massive win, right? Massive win against number two. First goal was a penalty after 25 from Silva. And the second one was also from Silva's foot, but it was actually headed in by Mendes. And the third one is also gonna be Mendes with a lovely little cross here from Fadini into Mendes. Lovely. That was a really good goal. And last but not least, we do have another silver goal. And here it is. A bit of a solo goal, actually. Very typical him. That might be the best performance of the season so far, together with the one we played in the last episode. But uh, yeah, dominating a big team is always going to be important. But I think this one is actually better because it was away from home with an extra goal as well. Why did this go away? I don't know. It, uh, it was there just before. We can still see it in here in the analyzer. But absolutely dominating performance. They barely had a chance. It was really, really good. Who was actually playing? Yeah, Mendes, play of the match in this one. 8.6 with those two goals. Fantastic. That was, so far, best game of the season. Here is the full schedule. And we have played 10 matches since the last episode. 7 wins, 1 draw, and 2 losses. And I am fairly happy with the overall result of those. Except from the loss against these guys, Fontinhas. Who is, I don't know where they actually are in the league right now. Ninth, they are ninth, so not the best result there, I would say, but otherwise, I'm fairly happy with them. We are top of the league right now, or well, at least our group, so yeah. Setubal on second place still, that's a bit of a surprise to me, as we I thought it would be Barry Barry Riense who would be there, but that is the one that we're gonna play today, right? That is the one we got Barry Riense, we also got Vasco Gama to play today, and we also have these guys, Michalense. So I have a feeling it might be decided in the next three games if we are gonna go up or you know, it's gonna go down to the very last games. But I think if we win against Barriense and against Vasco, then I think we are through. Then I think we are gonna go up. Now, I don't care if it's gonna be first place or second place. I don't care at all. It doesn't matter. Like we know, it doesn't matter with the points here. We just need to get into first or second place and that's it. So uh, yeah, it's been a, as you can also tell here, it's been a very good period of time with those schedules. We have been sitting first place all the way through, so it looks fairly decent. Our staff area got upgraded with a couple of new members as well. Guy Pautales, who is a coach, and I actually got this guy because of his set piece abilities, because I cannot get allowed a set piece coach, so why not just go out and get one that is a normal coach, who is also a fairly decent normal coach, to be honest. 
Also a new scout. Yep, we do have more scouts coming in. Diogo Carpentero, I think his name is. Along with a third physio here in, what is his name? Jose Claro. And last but not least, we do also have a Ronaldo at our club now. Yes, finally, we got Ronaldo. Performance analyst. Not that exciting, but hey, it is what it is. In terms of our profile as a manager, we have been fairly good. I mean, we did start with one coaching batch, but we did get another one as well. Um, so we are at Con Continental B license now. And the reason why I'm in here is also because we did sign a new contract. I just forgot to take a picture of it because it's a couple of months ago now. 120 pounds that uh, we are getting now until 2026. So they gave us two year contract, the board. That is very good. We did also have a couple of guys that were running out of contract that we actually like to sign again, starting with Colin Haug. Now, Colin Haug is on a new contract running to 2026 on 90 pounds. So we actually went down 30 pounds, to be honest. That's pretty good for us. Now, yeah, I think I'm okay with this. He played quite a few games this season and probably will play more because of injury problems. And there is a couple of negatives about him. He, his work rate is really bad. He's he's not quite the wingback I probably want in the future. His physicals are, of course, really, really solid, but he doesn't really fit our DNA to a, you know, he, he's not really on that spot on the DNA. His mentals are a little bit too low for my liking, especially like composure, determination here of three. Basically the determination and work rate on six and three, that's, that's too low for me. That's too low for me in the future. But uh, for now, I mean, yeah, sure. Another two years, he's 18. He can still develop a little bit. No negative in the cons. So at least we got that. Also, Jonas Waldmann, the other German, has signed a new contract. His contract was also running out, of course. Also running to 2026, 110. So he got 10 less pounds. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good for us. It's good business for us here. And if we end up selling them, hey, it was really good business then. But anyway, he has already, he's also been a little bit, you know, average, but maybe that got to do with also not really speaking Spanish and yeah, or sorry, Portuguese, <laughs> Spanish, Portuguese. Now this guy I am more okay with. He, he fits our profile a little bit better um, overall, I would say. He is a balanced personality, but it's very hard to not get anyone that is balanced because there are so many players that are balanced personality. Same deal, no cons that we really care too much about. So at least again, we got that. And he has been okay, but nothing. He's, I mean, two assists and two goals and 17 apps. Not, not great on that role. Not great on the attacking midfielder role, but he's been okay enough to give a new contract because he do have a high ceiling. Pina is also gonna be staying. And Diogo Pina, yes, he is gonna be staying for another two years on 65 pounds, which is fantastic because he has been, over the last two seasons here, one and a half season, he has been our goal scorer, right? He, he's, he's up there. He got 11 as well this season. So I'm very happy about uh, having him staying for sure. I mean, 24, two more years. With his goal contribution, it's it's gonna be good. He's been he's been consistently good for us. So I'm very happy that he's gonna be staying. We do also have one future signing that I did here, and the transport window is closed again. But this guy will come into the summer, and uh, we unfortunately I don't have a new scout report of him because yeah, um, I don't. <laughs> I am actually scouting him if I'm not mistaken, but we don't have it right now. But anyway, he's just a central defender, and I think he's gonna be better than what we have already. He is actually playing in the same division as us but he hasn't really done that well so i'm a little bit concerned about that now seeing it again but hey we'll, we'll see how he is when he comes in otherwise well we just have another good central defender maybe or half decent central defender but there is also some very bad news because andre silver he has left us yes he has it hurt so much but uh yeah he he would have been extremely unhappy if he was not allowed to speak with other clubs for some other for some reason right maybe it was his agent or whatever so for a very small fee he ended up and also some percentage next sale yeah he he will be missed i mean he will be missed he's gone and um what did we get 2.9k plus some percentages it's it's not great but uh yeah i i don't i don't want to have an unhappy player at our club because that will influence the entire squad uh, quite easily. So I just let him go and went looking for something else. And that's something else. And <laughs> yeah, he, he, looks, he looks incredible, right? His numbers looks very, very good as an inside forward, attacking midfielder, central midfielder, 
Masila type or even inverted winger or winger further down. He can do it all. He can do it all. He got some really good numbers in here. Off the ball 14, of course. Um, work rate is only 9, but it's not terrible. But hey, yeah, that's probably his weak spot, I would say. Decision making is only 9 as well. And I do like my inverted wingers right now to come deep and be sort of an advanced playmaker type or at least just hold up the ball a little bit so he yeah but 14 first touch i mean he's good he's good don't get me wrong he's good but he hasn't been good yet he hasn't he hasn't really performed four games 6.5 one assist and he's also been injured he, he um he's not an injury prone but he's been injured he had a couple of actually injuries here two pull ties or a groan and a tie uh, yeah and um, that's not great that is not great this one was not in our season that's from further down um, last season actually but yeah it's uh, hopefully he will come good for us i really hope because he looks like a he's, he's a star signing right he's a star signing he's on 220 pounds he is the top earner by far the top earner and he should be really really good but maybe it's all about just finding the right kind of thing for him um, in terms of how I'm gonna play him. Hopefully so, hopefully so. But yeah, there is the silver replacement. We have lost Porto as an affiliate for whatever unknown reason. I suppose they didn't like to pay us or something like that. Uh, so this time around, we have a team called Vis in the second division with quite a few under 19 players in their ranks. I didn't manage to get anyone on loan this season, but there are options here. There are definitely options in their ranks. Let's just take a quick look over here. If we just have a look at the under 19 squad here. Oh, no, that's the schedule. I want to go here. Oh, they actually moved them, but there should be quite a few good players in here. Maybe they moved them up to the under 23. Yeah, there is definitely some of them up here as well. So they got plenty of interesting players. A lot of them is already on my uh, shortlist as well. So yeah, new link. A new link for us to hopefully probably more so next season than this season. We're gonna, you know, make sure that we get a couple of loans from them. That could be really, really good quality. Especially if we're going up this season or next season. I, I hope we do go up. But even if not, there's still gonna be options here because they're playing in second league. So, and I think FC Porto, they didn't really want to loan us players because we were too far down, right? We're too far down in the systems. But these guys, I think they're willing to probably give us a couple of loan deals. We got an absolutely massive game against Paris Rense in the first game here, of course. And I have kind of changed how I approach the games in the last 10 ones. So let's, uh, let's go through it here. The first thing I do is actually go back to their last game that they have played. Well, more specifically, the last game they have played depending on home or and away because we are away from home against them and they are at home we are looking at their last home game right that's what we want to look at to see how they play in those so we go into the analytics here we go into the team and then what the first thing i'm looking for is the average position on the starting 11 here i'm gonna go look at the average position with the ball first so very wide they have a very wide formation um, when they're attacking at home and they don't seem to be very high up the pitch but they're definitely up there the next thing i'm looking at is the average position without the ball how they are defending and they are very very narrow in the way they are defending and i already checked up on it when they are away from home they do the exact opposite thing just just remember that just remember that if you do if you think about it yourself what would these teams do away and from home right they do different things depending on where they are so uh, yeah, now when we know that, we can also go check uh, the uh, heat map here and see how they actually get up the line. So it seems like they're not really in this game against one of the best in the in the league here, Vit Setubal, who is a really good team. They didn't really penetrate them on the right-hand side here, and we are probably very similar to Setubal. So in terms of strength, basically. So what I'm thinking is, we are probably okay when we are. Yeah, there is definitely a couple of things we need to do here, for sure. After that, I go back to the tactical screen, because in here I do actually have the scout report, because that's the next thing I'm looking at, more specifically the strengths and weaknesses. And I'm like just looking at what strengths do they have, what weaknesses do they have, and is there something I need to take note of. A couple of things that pops out here to me is their a passing ability, and also knowing that they are probably going to play very wide, they probably have some really good passes, so they, they likely want to control the games quite a bit. Um, also, the long shots is an interesting one, um, but not that we will probably change anything because of that, but it's an interesting one to see. 
nothing else not really anything here maybe the work rate is interesting to see that they are actually working hard and that also means they're probably quite drilled in their tactic um, in weaknesses, which is of course interesting for us, uh, is that their uh, goals against is coming from through balls. A lot of the assist is coming from through balls. That might be something we are looking at. And also the goals against is coming from, or 18 matches, they have 9 out of 24 assists coming from the right hand side of the pitch. Okay, right? With that information in mind, we can make a couple of, you know, just small tweaks to our main tactic. Um, so I think the first thing we want to do is probably go back to cautious here because they are probably more in control, especially playing at home. They are likely going to be in control here. We're going to drop it to cautious and in position. There is a couple of things in here that I'm thinking about doing. I think the first thing because of how narrow they are when they are defending, we probably want to go a bit wider, actually fairly wide. And also because of how many through balls was actually working against them. I think we're going to go uh, passing directness a little bit more direct. I think we're going to leave the tempo quite high as it is. Run and defense should also be okay. We could change this, but since they are narrow, I think this would be working okay. As long as there is a couple of other things we might need to look at. Hit early crosses could be ideal. I think that might be it. I think So I'm not really changing a lot um, in, in transition. I don't think there is anything I want to change in here at all. The way we are defending, I, I think that's pretty nailed on if you see something like strength or they're really good at crossing maybe maybe you want to trap them on the inside or maybe stop crosses or something like that but i don't feel like it's very often a good thing to do that i'd rather just try and defend how i do defend now there is actually one thing that i did notice is that they're playing the same formation as us but they do have an and an, an more often than not when i see an attacking midfielder i'm thinking okay maybe maybe we should uh, have one of these guys on defend uh, and that, that, that actually makes us a little bit more structured. But then again, we also noticed that their right hand side was a lot weaker, right? Or actually, let's check up on it again. What did it say? 18 matches have come from the right side of the pitch. But is, it th is that their right side or our right side? I think it's actually their right side. That means our left side. Um, which makes me think that I might want to put Fabinho on support and let Haug actually go down there. But I'm actually not sure if that's the case. The right hand side of the pitch. No, I think the I think it's the opposite way actually. Now when I sit here thinking about it, I think it's the op opposite way. I haven't actually thought about that before now, but I think it's actually the other way around. Yeah, it must be the other way around. So, for, so wing back here, going up and this guy on a little bit more on support role. And I think that's going to be good. So yeah, that is actually the changes I think that I had thought about. So in terms of who is going to be playing, well, I already set that up how it should be. So Texeria in goal, Fabinho on that wingback attack role. Igor is going to get a chance. He's coming up from the uh, under 19th and getting a chance here. He played one or two matches from the bench, I believe, or maybe he actually did start in. But he actually started as a wingback because we, we had injury problems. But I'm giving him a chance uh, in the central defense along with Narcissio, which is... He's been, he's been fairly good, actually. He hasn't been good in the last five games, but overall, pretty dang decent. Haug is in there, which means it's because he had been out with an injury and I forgot how to set up the B team to get them some play time. So I actually have a lot of players that don't really, they're not really match sharp. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going with match sharpness over anything else here. Uh, Fadigas, Hashimi in the midfield with that ball winning midfield on defense, because I think we do want to do especially with the wing also going forward we might want to do that now that, that, that this guy is an interesting one he's been playing really well in the last two games on that white target forward kind of role yeah so far it, it, it seems to be working well with Fabinho coming uh, coming uh, overlapping him Waldman has not been great but he is probably the best man in there for that role um but I I do think attacking midfielder is I don't know. I'm not, not. I'm not a fan of it so far. I would say Miranda on the left because I think I want more pace. I want more acceleration. I just want someone that is really fast over there and can dribble a bit, can do a bit of technique stuff as well. Because we are definitely going to play on the counter here. Pinner up top. In this skin that I'm using now, this team news is not really all that exciting to be honest. I think the other one was way better. But hey, there are some positives and negatives in both skins. But it's mainly the box that I had to deal with from the other one. And uh, yeah, so this screen, yeah. 
I don't think that's gonna be worth showing anymore. I'll rather just show the tactical stuff first and then just go straight into the goals, right? Or whatever happens, or whatever happens. 19 minutes in, we do go attacking down the left-hand flank and Miranda is crossing it in for Materias to get a goal. Lovely, that's exactly what we want to see. But only one minute later, they actually strike back. A very good attack by them, getting it into our box and... That was an easy goal for them. 39 minutes in, things are going our way. And again, Materius is very important in this kind of attack. Fabinho into Pinar and we get the goal from the cross. Lovely. Half time. And yeah, unfortunately, this screen is not quite as good as the last one. But you know what? We still get the information we need. We got all the average ratings down here. We got all the players, right? We do have the uh, match stats over here and we do have the XG. So it's, it's, it should be fine. Now, what happened in this match is exactly how we wanted it to go, right? The, the master plan worked, basically. I think the small changes we did definitely had an impact on how this game went. It's a fairly even game, but it's definitely a game where we are the better team away from home here. Um, so two of these on target shots was the two goals going in, right? The two crosses we saw uh, from the goals. The other two is through balls. We actually had two through balls go over the top into Pinna. And unfortunately, he didn't take his chances. But right now, what I'm seeing on the pitch, it works. So I think we just move on. Right, so 63 minutes in and things are... I paused the game here and I think we need to do something. Because as we can tell from... It might actually move in our direction again here, but that might not be true. But the match momentum is going their way. They have changed something. I don't know what it is. I can't really tell, but they have changed something. Not formation, it's just maybe mentality or something. I don't know. But I think we need fresh legs and we probably also need to change something to try and avoid getting a goal against us here. What I'm thinking is probably putting in a little bit of, uh, what is it called, <laughs> an old guy, an experienced guy. Sorry, Pedro, you're not that old, but I think some experience might be good. But Igor and Narcissio is not really looking that bad. I guess Igor is on 6.5. You know what? Let's just put in Rodriguez here because I think I want a bit of experience in there. Waldman, Waldman is not looking too hot, 6.4, I think again, maybe just putting one of those guys out who is not really playing too well. And again, this attacking midfielder role never really seems to be doing too well within this system. So who are we gonna play? Um, yeah, I don't know, maybe maybe uh, Pixioto, but we are not on the ball anyway, so Pixioto is not really the option. Do we, uh, do we do something silly and actually change our formation? I don't think so, I think we're just gonna... I think we're just gonna put Pixioto on because he can sometimes come on as a super sub and do things because why not let's just try because I don't want to change the formation here I don't think that's the you know the thing to do so I think we're just doing those two and then we're probably looking at right so I, I, I thought about it for a second here I, I think what we're gonna do is actually stop overlapping right we're gonna stop overlapping and just hit the early crosses to try and get it in there maybe maybe just use mixed crosses here now um, because we are not really trying to overlap and get it in that way and maybe... No, nah, I don't want to trap inside. I don't want to trap inside. I think that's just it. Just a slight little change. Maybe maybe put Fabinho down on full back. Not, not full back. We're not allowed to do that. Support here on the wing back role. I think that's probably it. We could put him on defensive role, but I think that's probably a little bit too much. Or is it? You know what? I think we're going to have both of our midfielders on defense here. Maybe we should trap them inside then. You know what? Let's trap them inside because we have so many you know bodies in here on defense so let's try and do that because it seems like most of our chances are coming from wider areas so let's just try and trap them inside and see if we can get the ball off them in there i don't know if that's gonna work but hey it is what it is maybe we should put him on support as well just to have a little bit more fluid of a team yeah let's try that well not a single highlight and we are now at 81 minutes in so i think we nullified whatever they were trying to do it it do seems like they get a, a couple of more chances but no highlights so yeah uh, i guess it, i guess it works so i guess we can just make our last couple of subs here when we are in the 81 uh, 81 minutes in uh, yeah, fadigas he's his legs are probably gonna be around the time where he's coming off and i guess we're switching hashimi and upara around because one of them is left footed and the other one is well he can use both so <laughs> that's why we're doing that hauk is He's doing okay. He's, his condition is probably getting there. Same with uh, Materias here. It's getting there, but I don't know. Maybe it's the best thing to have in there. Uh, just a you know a wide target forward that might be the best thing. So I'm. What are we taking out? Fabinho? Or what can we put in that would make sense? Maybe Brown just for fresh legs on the on the right hand side here. I mean, sure. I think that makes sense. Also, maybe. 
I, I don't need to make another sub, but I mean, we, we might as well. I think Mendes would be an idea up front. If we, if, I mean, we're probably gonna get a couple of counters. So fresh legs, fresh, fresh, fresh legs up front with Mendes. He's definitely good for a goal or two sometimes. So why not? Let's do that. Sometimes there is just a goal where you just sit there thinking, well, there's nothing I could have done about that. And that's this one. Nothing we could have done. Full time, 2-2. Two, two. Not a bad result, to be honest, away from home. Uh, but of course, that, that one goal in the 89th minute here, that was salty. But they did actually get one more chance right after that. And that was also a massive chance. So I think we should be happy with what we get here. Um, I am not exactly sure what they did tactically in terms of this. I should probably have played on, I don't know, comprehensive or something like that to actually understand what actually happened in the game match engine here because I had no idea what was going on. Simply no clue. Um, they definitely changed something and the changes we did was right here, right? That was right here. So we did nullify it slightly, but not enough to not concede that goal. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, we can be happy about the result. I think 2-2 is a good result here. Don't get me wrong. But I, I do also think that I should probably just change it to comprehensive and just look at the match more carefully when stuff like that happens. Because I can probably figure it out and then change from there but yeah overall pretty good game here between the two matches i'm actually doing a little bit of management and uh, we got a guy that is gonna leave us a francisco eugenio who is a, one of the youngsters and the main reason why he's leaving us is because that he is not very good and i don't think he will become ever any good so i'm kind of letting some of the youngsters go now and i actually have them on if we go into is that in the transfers an unwanted list because i do have a director of football right now he's actually leaving at the end of the season as well but i do have one so i'm actually just putting all the players that i don't want all the youngsters in here Ooh, what happened there all the youngsters is in here so we probably will have a lot of them going out and all of these is something that i looked at and i was thinking nah not for me so uh, yeah, we're probably going to move a lot of those on. And some of them will also stay because we can't really get rid of all of them, probably. We are again upgrading the recruitment network, which is fantastic. We're definitely going to rely a bit on intakes in the future as well, I suppose. In terms of the board, I have been... Uh, well, I've, yeah, I think they're getting tired of me. <laughs> Lots of rejects, of course. Improved youth facilities, they just rejected that. Uh, two times actually in a row but we do get a better recruitment that's that's gonna be interesting because it's it, it, again not this year but next season it should be kicking in now something interesting that uh, you probably saw last time is the set pieces have actually improved after i got that new coach that has decent set piece kind of things so you know that might be working Michalense is the next opponent they are currently eighth in the league so not the toughest match but not the easiest either we are at home this time in their last away game which is funny enough also to Setubal here they play fairly wide when they are not having the ball which is interesting to see and with the ball they were actually very narrow which is interesting but yeah just a couple of again good things to know in terms of their strength it looked like they're fairly good when it comes to assisting in crosses and it also says it down here creativity 8 out of 23 came from the left hand side uh, no sorry right hand side of there so probably our left hand side um yeah and and weaknesses definitely not good on the ball so they're probably not really liking having the ball they're not really blessed with regarding to crossing so probably we don't really care about them crossing as long as we probably play someone who is good in the air in our central defense it should be okay not really good pace either so high tempo is probably going to be very good for us yeah don't really see anything here that is suggesting that i should change all that much all right so playing this game is going to be Tixeria in goal still Fabinho is going to be playing again Gonzalez and Rodriguez is coming into the central defense because I think I won the experience and them also being a little bit better in the air compared to the other two I think we want that actually and also the wing back over here Haug is going to start in again but I am going to put him on attack because I think we can do that and Opara is coming in to play the ball winning midfield on the left because we did know that their assist making is coming from the left so we might as well play Opara over here and um, Hashimi on the deep line playmaker role on the right hand side 
Uh, we're gonna give uh, Pixioto a chance here because uh, what's what's his name? What's his face? Uh, Waltman. He's been terrible the uh, last couple of games. So let's just give Pixioto a game in there. He is definitely starting over there as the wide target forward. And Mendes is gonna get a chance from the inverted winger. Pinner up top. Now there is definitely a couple of things we want to change here. Cautious. No. Positive, please. We are structured right now. We might not want to be structured. We might want to have one less attacking player in there. I think I think we're dropping the attacking midfielder to support. I actually also just took out everything except from tackle harder on his instructions because the attacking midfielders haven't really been good with all my instructions on. So let's just try and take it out actually. And I think we are going into positions here and taking a look. We don't want to hit early crosses. We don't want to play too. We we kind of just want to go back to what we played before. So that is probably it. We want to overlap left and right. We want to focus down the right and left hand side. Pass into space, low crosses is fine. Against these guys, definitely low crosses, I think. And transition should be fine. Opposition should be fine. I mean, we could we could do something here about stopping their crosses, but I'll do that if I feel like it's a problem. Otherwise, we're just going in how we want to play and not how they are playing. Well, the only thing I actually do here is actually putting the ball-winning midfielder on the left. That's the only thing that I'm sort of thinking about when I'm thinking about them going forward. Otherwise, it's all about me going forward against their defensive kind of shape. And I want to be fairly narrow. They are also narrow. No, they were wide. They were actually wide in their defensive formation. So we want to be fairly narrow and then let our wingbacks overlap and then, you know, cut in with our crosses. Right, I think that's probably about it. Yeah, I think that's about it. I think we're about ready to get into this match. Let's get in and get some goals. All right, so 20 minutes in and things are not quite going how I hoped for. There is one thing I want to change. We had one good opportunity after 20 minutes. That's not good. At least they didn't have any either, but... Uh, one good chance for Materias here, but I think what we want to change in instructions is probably going to fairly wide and maybe also slightly shorter passing directness here. I think this should make sure that we are getting a little bit wider and getting a little bit more opportunities because as we can, if I can pause it again here, as we can tell, this, this doesn't seem to be enough against their... I mean, they, 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 it's actually a 50-50 position right now. And I think maybe a little bit more space could be good for us in terms of how much line or how much there is in between our lines, basically. We got a penalty. Pinner is taking it away. And um, that actually came after a couple of pretty decent attacks right after we did our changes. It's only a couple of minutes later. We had two pretty good attacks one of them actually resulted in that penalty happy days all right half time and yeah not a lot happened after that they actually had one good opportunity from a corner so they don't really have anything in open play but nah nor did we nor did we we didn't really get anything after that so it's a fairly even game with us having the best opportunities so i think we should just continue how we're playing here with being one nil up we're not really chasing another goal we're just chasing you know the three points basically so as long as they don't get a lot of opportunities i'm okay with that all right so 66 minutes in i paused the game and uh yeah not a lot not a lot is going on one highlight for us that's it nothing for them and i just think we should make some subs here just to put on some fresh legs especially up front i uh, i think we should just put a little bit more pressure on the mendes is not really he wasn't really fit for this game either so i think we're just taking him out on this uh, yellow card and miranda is the perfect option because he's fairly fast and putting someone on that is fairly fast where you're actually countering them quite often or just you know fresh legs that are fast against a team that is probably not we saw that they were not very pacey right they are not very fast so someone like miranda's he can definitely come on and do you know <laughs> the dirty do them dirty basically um also i think materials is gonna have a i mean he's he's playing well there's nothing wrong with it i just he's a very young guy and i don't really want to uh, oh i i thought i had someone that could actually come in here now that's gonna be a problem do we have anyone who could come on instead of him yeah, I think we are putting Valente on instead of Materias. And what we are going to do is we are going to move Valente um, over where Miranda is. And we are going to move Valente up where Pinner is. So Pinner is going to be on the wing instead. Pinner usually don't really do well on the inverted winger. Uh, so maybe we want to do a wide target forward on that side instead now. Yeah, I think that's going to be the case. I think we're going to move the wide target forward on the left hand side. And see what Pinner can do in a wide target forward role. 
rather than the inverted winger where he never does well so yeah just two small ch changes here or subs basically and we do get our second goal after a really good counter attack that ended out in this sort of situation where it ends up with pinner and he is gonna get his second goal and here i was just about to pause the game and then for bin you get injured ah that's not great well anyway we need to make some subs here in the 81st minute so Fabinho obviously coming out, so that's not great, having him injury. We don't know what kind of injury it is. Um, I think, uh, ooh, what are we doing here? I think Brown probably, because I might also want to probably shut off Haug. I'm not too sure yet. What kind of injury is this? Foot injury. Oh god, that's probably three to five weeks, potentially. Gonsalves, uh, he's complacent, and he's, he's, he's yeah, he, he's not really that fit anymore rodriguez is on a yellow i mean they've been they've been doing quite well in there but i think maybe gonzalez is coming out pina we don't really have anyone who can play over there do we waltman could come on picks you two over there i think i'd rather just take some of the central defenders off um and potentially Haug. actually Haug is doing well he's actually doing quite well in a lot of games Haug. he's actually doing a lot better than i thought he would that's kind of interesting so i think rodriguez on this yellow is probably the most necessary one i think actually both of our yeah i think i think both of our central defenders are coming out now that's a bit of a risk but we are two nil up so you know you don't normally want to do that but since we're two nil up and they don't really get any chances and that's probably more to do with the defensive midfielders than it is to uh you know the central uh, central defenders but yeah let's uh, let's bring in igor narcissio and brown so the entire back line basically yeah sure well that did not take long for brown to get an assist wow straight into penner who is getting his hat trick lovely stuff and there we are full time three nil um pretty perfect i mean that little slight change we did early on with moving a little bit more uh, in a wider formation or just pulling it a little bit wider and also going a little bit more forward i think that really loosened it all up so we get a lot of chances out of it so that was pretty good, and uh, three goals by Pena, that's, I mean, what can you say? Perfect game. Pretty much perfect game. Look at their, look at their pass map over here, and their heat map. Like, they, they just never got through our defensive midfielders, and also our wingbacks probably did a lot of the work as well. But yeah, they just never got through us, and you can see here how important the deep-line playmaker is. Absolutely brilliant by Hashimi here, 7.8 as, as well. Key, key passes, 5, 2 uh, clear-cut chances. So he was very, very important in that role. Probably the ball-winning midfielder too to stop them from getting anywhere where they wanted. Because we know that their, uh, their right-hand side, well, that is why they got all of their assists, basically. So he, having the ball-winning midfielder here is probably also a really good choice. So yeah, just a perfect game here. Perfect tactically, I think, as well. Don't think I could have done anything better. Um, I mean, there is always the case for something to be going better we gotta score five goals or six goals but <laughs> you know uh, overall very very happy yeah Fabinho he pulled his ligament so he's out for two to three weeks hopefully the youngster can step up to well he did get an assist actually the youngster so hopefully he can pull up again for a couple of more of those in the next couple of games I am very consistent when it comes to the board and they do accept another scout thank you kindly all right so next game is gonna be against Vasco or the last game is gonna be against Vasco Gama who is fourth so this is quite an important match it's if we're winning this we're pretty much guaranteed to go up to the promotion stage or at least very very close to it so um yeah we're looking at the heat map and also the positioning here without the ball and it does look like they're sitting fairly narrow and again against the Bell, and this is the home game because we are playing against them at their home ground so very narrow in the way that they are um defending basically there is gonna be space behind this fullback or wing it's probably a wingback actually it's definitely gonna be space here for whoever is coming up there we need to think about that for sure otherwise i don't really see anything out of the ordinary let's check up on how they actually play on the ball pretty far up actually pretty far especially when you think about it, it's against Setubal here which they did lose 2-0 they are very far up the pitch so they're probably gonna pressure us a bit and they are playing three at the back they're playing a five uh five two three formation or something like that so I think there's gonna be a lot of space behind them right a lot of space out wide so we want to take advantage of that and not really play through the mid but we might want to try and trigger them to play fairly narrow uh, without the ball right so we actually have a, even more space out here for the guys that we want uh, to come up and overlap so there is definitely something here 
Um, what about the heat map? How's that looking? So they're not really, they're not really getting. They, I mean, they're trying to get it over here and then probably cross it in. Um, we can probably see that somewhere else. Yeah, it is the five-two-three formation, and they do play wing play, so they do like to cross it in. So we might want to do something on that as well. This time around, I don't really see anything in their strengths outside of just them being a fairly good team. They have a lot of good things about them: good natural fitness, concentration levels, tackling, all of that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, that's going to be a little bit of a concern, of course. Also a good left wing back, um, center back. Yeah. Uh, in terms of this over here, it does seem like, and that also corresponds with what we saw on the heat map, that, uh, or the positioning, that their right-hand side is often where some of their uh, conceder is coming from, uh, the, the assists. So that, that would make sense to me as well. And through balls, that also kind of makes sense, because there would be space behind them uh, in that free central defender kind of situation. Otherwise, I don't see a whole lot to report on, which is interesting. Now, um, yeah, I, I think I think that's that's gonna be it for the tactics. Well, no, not really. Uh, we do have changes over here, but I actually want to move a little bit ahead and actually do that in the team selection because in here I can set next match only, so it doesn't change every single time I do this. Um, because this is kind of our main tactic, and then I'm changing it, you know, a couple of specific things only for the next uh, game here. Unless it didn't change it from last time. Let's check it out. No, I think it looks like how it should. Okay, so what I'm thinking is we probably want Pixie Old. I mean, this is the team we're putting out there, right? This is the team. So what I'm thinking is that we want to kind of exploit that right and left hand side where their wingbacks are really far up when we are attacking them. And we want to attack really fast. So positive is probably okay in this spot because I think... Ah, we are away from home. I think maybe cautious would be the ideal choice. And then probably... I don't think we want to hit early crosses. But we low crosses might be ideal against three center central defenders. But what I'm thinking is probably standard attacking width. And also probably standard passing directness would be a little bit better. We definitely want to pass into space. Run a defense. I we don't really want to go through the mid, do we? We do want to play out on the right and left hand side and then maybe cross it over to the other side or something like that will probably happen. I think that's the only change I want to do here against these guys. I don't really see anything else that I right now believe would be good. Transition? Nah. Nah. And also out of position. I mean, what we could try and do and stop crosses because that's, that's basically the only thing we see them actually being good at. That is crosses and that is how they want to play with the wing play. So maybe stop crosses would be ideal. But I, I don't I don't typically do this. Yeah, avoid crossing. I think I'll rather, you know, pull them inside rather than trying because we do also have two defensive midfielders. Do we want him on defense? I don't think so. Not with their tactic, right? Their tactic doesn't really suggest that we should go for at the more defensive kind of midfielder. We should just have support midfielders. Yeah, I think that's it. I am wondering if I should put him back on support over here. Um, I know there would be space in here, but that would be space for him to exploit. Um, Pixioto, I'm actually picking Pixioto, and I think I want to change this as well. Not sitting narrow. I want him fairly wide, actually, in, uh, in, in this specific situation here. And also the other side fairly wide. Uh, and get further forward as well. I think that's going to be better. And then the support on the wing back here. Because I want to exploit that, especially over here, I want to exploit that a lot. And the white target man, he's he's going to do, well, white target man stuff, hopefully. And this guy, he's not going to be happy because there is not going to be any space in there for him. Just nothing. There's not going to be any... He, I don't know what he's going to do, but he's not going to have a good game. I, I can already tell you guys now, he's not going to have a good game in this one. But anyway, I think that's it. Let's, uh, let's get in there and get some goals. First highlight, set piece, pinna, goal. Perfect. Half time, and there was only one more highlight, and that's, <laughs> that was about it. That was actually a chance for us right here. They didn't have a chance before, well, 20, 30 minutes, actually 30 minutes in, and I think they figured out that we were actually being a bit cautious, so I guess they probably changed their mentality a bit, because they did manage to get a couple of chances near the end here, but, I mean... I, I can't really... It's a very even game, and I can't really complain too much. We are 1-0 up against one of the best teams in the league or at least in our group so yeah let's just continue and if if they have changed the mentality i definitely need to make sure that i figure out what it is in the second half if that's the case and then 
of course change things around in second half but let's just move on with how we're doing things and let's see if that is the trend all right so i just paused it here and i'm actually playing on full mess right now because yeah it, the, the trend is definitely continuing and i think what happened or what they did is probably a pull their mentality to attacking so they're playing a higher tempo and also their wing backs are really far up uh, so i think what we want to do here is probably pull back brown to support and we might even go on defense actually because we don't really need another goal here we don't specifically need another goal because we're still flexible because of the caution mentality here. we're still flexible because we have four on support actually we have five on support but i think with those on defense think about this in possession we're probably not overlapping we're just going over the top basically uh probably shoot on side instead hit early crosses because of how they're playing right now we're doing this so i think that's probably good and then maybe we should put i don't think it's gonna be him it's probably gonna be the uh inverted winger over here on attack because there's gonna be space over here so i want him on attack and the other two just being helpful in transition basically and yeah i think that's probably what i want to do and also maybe a sub i haven't actually thought about that one 6.3 on materials here so he's not really doing well in this game um which is understandable he's he, someone with some pace would be good pendrin uh he's actually coming back from an injury here pedrinho i think we're proving, putting him in there on the inverted winger maybe we should put both of them on attack actually and maybe do something like that just sit a little bit further back and try to counter them and yeah who else is there anyone else we want to do anything with here 60 minutes in pick soto I mean, he's not much of a winger, actually. So maybe we are putting our two best and also quickest wingers in there. Yeah, let's try. Let's try that, actually. Let's do this. I think this should be good. Apprehensive on Hashimi. Yeah, let's just keep him in there. That's the two stops we're going to do and the changes we're going to do to see if we can turn this around. Well, that did seem to stop them from getting any chances, but unfortunately an injury here. So yeah, 12 minutes later here, no chances for them at all. So, you know, that seems to be working, the tactical things. But unfortunately, Hog is coming out and we only have a half ready Fadini in there. Sure. Uh, should we change him to an inverted wing bag here? Nah, I don't think so. I think he's just going to play as a wing bag on def defense here. I think we actually need him to just be defensive. Yeah. All right. 82 minutes in and I guess we did the exactly right thing. As we can also see from the match momentum, they did not have a single thing going for them. On the other hand, we had quite a few chances uh, going our way instead. So I think we're going to make a couple of subs here. Just probably a fitness concern here. Opara is probably coming out. Uh, quick sub. Yeah. Opara, he's out for... I guess it doesn't really matter here. Actually, it does matter, but I guess it's gonna be... Yeah, let's just bring him in. Let's just bring Fadini in. But we do need to move them around because he's not left-footed, but Hashimi is. So the deep line playmaker is going on the left-hand side. Um, he is nervous. No, he was composed. I don't think I want to put anyone nervous on, actually. Gonzalez Brown is not playing too well. Guess we no i think i think we're actually putting on valente up front here instead of pina uh yes pina have been playing fine but i think just fresh legs up front seems like a good idea with us actually being the best right now out there let's see if we can just get a second goal here full time and yes it's a one nil victory which is that's very very good it's very good and uh yeah we i mean this this was this was an interesting one wasn't it because it didn't look like it was going our way in the mid section here where they changed something. But then we changed here and all of a sudden we nullified what they did and they didn't... How many? Did they get any chances after that? Oh yeah, they did get maybe two chances late in the second half here. But still overall, this second half, that was ours. Um, we, we, we had a lot of good opportunities. Uh, mostly on headers, so I guess the XG is not really suggesting that it's really, really good. But definitely a very even game but where we were better right we were better and we scored that lucky penalty uh, not penalty uh, set piece goal pinner is he a man of the match no take serious wow so he probably did a couple of saves i didn't notice him doing any saves actually that was really really good but hey whatever he did it and he's been fairly good throughout the season i think he's around 7.0 in average rating which is high for a goalkeeper so yeah pretty good that was the last game good we have gotten a bit of an injury problem on uh, <laughs> on the fullbacks or wingbacks in our case two to three months Colin Haug is out that is terrible 
Um, I'm actually gonna send him to the specialist uh, instead. I'm, I'm gonna use the money here. Yeah, that's not, that's really not great. And I think next season we definitely want to have one extra fullback or wingback or whatever we are gonna play with because it's been a problem this season so far. 100% uh, been a problem for us. So uh, let's go check out the championship here. 53 points, 49 for Setubal and 46 for Barry Rienzi. Okay, so we are not secure yet, but I, I mean, we need to drop uh, all, all points that we can to basically not get it. There are two games left. I'm gonna say that we are gonna get in there. I, I'm not too worried because it's fairly easy games here. I would be surprised if I'm coming back and saying that we are not in the promotion stage. <laughs> I would be very, very surprised. So I'm not gonna come back for those two games. Um, I'm gonna come back when the promotion stages are looking like they're gonna be interesting for us to play in. And if we are losing the three, the three first matches again in the promotion stage, well, it is what it is then. I mean, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be it. I think that's gonna be it. Let's uh, let's go over to the front page here or this page. That's also changed because of the skin, of course. So that is how it looks now. But anyway, guys, that's gonna be it for today. And next time we are getting back in there in the group stages, uh, the promotion stages and see what we can do this time around. Hopefully a little bit better than last year, but we never know. It's, it's a bit, I, again, that format is not really, really my i don't really enjoy that format but it is what it is we, we we want to get out of it we want to actually get promoted this season so hopefully we can do better anyway very long episode again again i'll probably you know maybe do one less game uh, where i'm doing all this tactical stuff one less game each episode is probably a good idea but anyway yeah i i don't mind it being long episodes just if it's over one hour, then, then it's, I mean, it's probably, I, I try to keep it around 40 minutes or thereabout or less. Less would also be good. But yeah, it, it's just how I do things and how I tend to, I don't know, I just like it. I hope you enjoy it as well. And if you do, well, you know all the stuff, leave a like, all that. And yeah, see you around next time.